Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different and that is because tomorrow, this time, one o'clock, I am headed for Perth, Western Australia. I'm so excited, like I couldn't be more excited. You know when you're like levitating from excitement, <laughs> that's honestly how I feel. I've never even attempted anything in the realm of like being a digital nomad. But I've always wanted to, so even on my Instagram bio at some point my blurb said like aspiring nomad because since COVID it's been like this thing that consumes my brain where it's just like Cape Town's beautiful and I absolutely love it but honestly when you haven't left for <laughs> two and a half years and yeah not seen, I haven't seen my brother for two and a half years since the pandemic hits, him and his partner left just before. Um, so poor Pete and Linda were like <laughs> stuck in Australia, in like Western Australia to make things worse where it's been notoriously hectic in terms of its lockdown and its COVID protocols and everything. So, so excited to see them, so excited to work remotely and yeah, I'll be back to Cape Town in a month's time but obviously wanted to kind of just share what that journey looks like if you are maybe South African trying to travel to Australia, this might be interesting. If you're trying to be a digital nomad, it might be interesting and as for my regular followers you guys seem to like and like seeing what I'm up to even if it's not strictly digital marketing related so hopefully they'll be relevant to everyone so this is my <clears throat> suitcase for tomorrow so I actually went and bought a three-piece set and um, I'm flying Qatar so you can fly with three three bags each each of the big bags can be 23 kilos and then um, like a hand hand luggage because I'm taking camera equipment I'm gonna take a backpack and then a, a small rollie and a big rollie. But yeah, I got this really cute set from Macro. So very keen to put it to good use. And you would think being a freelancer that it would be less stressful traveling because you don't have to put in leave or anything like that. But honestly, it's been such a journey, not just from the standpoint of work, although obviously financially, Western Australia is a lot more expensive than South Africa. The flights were exorbitant because I had to change them, which I will get into. And yeah, it's, it's just been a process of like ticking things off one monster to-do list and like I can't even believe that I've like ticked off the last thing on my list. So um, yeah, at this point like obviously just looking forward to getting going. In terms of um, having to change flights, so I booked um, about two months ago or three months ago thinking that my visa would be quick just because whenever I've had like a Schengen visa or anything like that, like I went to Paris a couple years ago, it was so quick with the visa. So just expected like with the efficiency of Australia that it would be something similar and boy was I wrong. Eight weeks later the visa arrives and the indication given on their website is 11 days to 11 months. So you have no idea when this thing is coming. So just change the flights and I wasn't sad about it because I realized it was par for the course, but obviously once you've paid cancellation fees and stuff, it starts to get expensive. So I think in total my flights were 24,000 Rand, um, RIP my bank balance. Um, but yeah, in any case, it's all happened. And then to make, like add insult to injury, I got COVID in, in this period of flights being changed. So I had two weeks of just man down <clears throat> and I wear a Garmin sports watch. And it's been so interesting like to track how COVID like really does impact you because as like a fit and healthy person who is triple vaxxed, might I add, it like knocked me for a six for sure. And like even still when I wake up in the mornings, like weeks later, I don't feel 100%. My heart's doing like strange palpitation-y things. And yeah, in the heights of it, I was waking up with a heart rate of 110 beats per minute, which to put in perspective, I think my resting heart rate is about 60. So just a frightening thing to go through and I hope, yeah, that anyone else who goes through Omicron, which supposedly, you know, is a, a chilled variant that they don't have this experience because it is quite scary. And as a fit person, I haven't been able to exercise. So I'm just feeling like out of sorts and even more stuck at home than normal. Um, but yeah, the, the good thing about the flights having changed in the process, you no longer need to be, um, you no longer need to test for COVID. So either leaving South Africa or coming um, into Australia. So basically I just show an app on my phone which confirms my vaccination status as being triple vaxxed and then you don't have to do any kind of testing. So they have been 
pros. The things that I'm worried about are mainly the fact that I've seen South Africans sometimes have to travel with a face shield on Qatar. I'm flying through Doha. Thankfully, I don't have to fly through Joburg on the way there, so I'm just going Cape Town, Doha, Doha, Perth, but on the way back, I'll do a, a triple leg. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. Hopefully, yeah, you enjoy joining me as much as I enjoy taking you, and I can't wait to take you along for this crazy trip. thing to do in South Africa's public transport is a little bit dodge so it's nice to be able to do this by yourself and to feel safe so I'm excited for that I'm gonna hit the shops for a little bit and then um, I don't know maybe just have an explore there's free cat buses around town so that's like more sightseeing vibes whereas these are obviously like more transity buses um, we're staying well, I'm staying with my brother in the suburb, so it's a little bit further out, but still very easy to get into town. So I will take you guys along for the ride. So safe to say my time in Perth has already been chock-a-block with lots of fun memories, family cutie as well as yeah some work, I mean I'm working the whole time I'm here and then some solo travel like exploration stuff um, at the same time. So I was a little bit apprehensive about traveling by myself just because I am quite an anxious person and so yeah just coming into Western Australia with them being so strict. I was obviously a little bit nervous about visas and that sort of thing, um, but yeah, I got a subclass 600 visa, like I think I mentioned in the initial clip, and because I was triple vaxxed, there was not much that could have gone wrong, but I really did have a great trip, a great flight, I didn't even get stopped at Border Patrol coming in, I had like flashbacks of like all the Border Patrol episodes that I watched and how strict Australia obviously are <laughs> like what did I don't know what I thought they were going to confiscate like my Barbie toothpaste which was the only travel size toothpaste I could find so yeah it was a really good trip and the really lucky part was the second flight so the second leg which was Doha Perth I actually had three seats to myself which was like that has never happened to me on a flight before it was just dreamy so I literally slept the entire time so I actually arrived feeling pretty wired like I didn't feel jet lagged at all so Saturday got her well got here at like 6 p.m 7 p.m Aussie time um, or Perth time should I say and then yeah I went to bed at 11 o'clock didn't have any issues sleeping and it wasn't until like Sunday nights so I like get into bed at 10 11 o'clock comes, 12 o'clock comes, 1 o'clock comes, and then I was like, okay, the jet lag's got to me. So it continued like that for a couple of days, but to be honest, it wasn't tiredness that I was feeling. I, I'm not sure what jet lag is meant to be. It sounds like it's meant to be tiredness. Mine was wildness and the inability to fall asleep. And then I was actually, despite not sleeping regularly, I felt totally fine. So Thankfully, it's now Friday. I am 100% acclimatized to Perth time and it's actually worked really well. So Perth is six hours ahead of South Africa and all my clients are in South Africa currently. So 
what's that's meant is that when I come online at like seven, eight o'clock in the morning, my South African clients are sleeping. So then when they log in for their day, they'll get deliverables in their inbox immediately, which is like insane. It will have arrived in their inbox at like whatever, 3 a.m. in the morning. So it's been working really well so far because it's not really a pure play holiday. Like I'm aiming to work about four days a week while I'm here. So while I would normally probably take a Friday off um, because the weather was really good yesterday, that was what you would have seen me just doing a bit of sightseeing. I caught the red cat bus, like I mentioned, which goes east to west um, on the CBD, in the CBD of Perth. And yeah, I did some nice shopping, bought a beautiful handbag from Maya. And yeah, I just was really enjoying kind of the peaceful traveling time and just kind of introspection. It gives you a lot of time to think and like figure out what your next steps in life are. So I think as much as I'm here, you know, by myself, it's not felt like lonely at any point. Like I, I don't feel unsafe. I don't feel scared. So definitely if you wanted to like solo travel, I feel like Perth would be like the best way to get into it because honestly you can like catch a bus anywhere pretty much and you feel very safe by yourself. And maybe that's compared to South Africa where there's a lot of places in Cape Town where you don't necessarily feel safe as a woman by yourself. So I mean, maybe that's a uniquely South African perspective, but certainly it has been really amazing. And I haven't battled at all with like motivation and pushing myself forwards with the clients that I am contracted to because I feel so blessed to be in this position where I can travel because I felt so trapped in like previous roles where, you know, you'd get like 15 days of leave or 21 days of leave and you weren't able to go anywhere. Whereas now it's like, um, quite a liberating feeling to realize like this is totally possible and you don't even have to like um, take a knock financially like my billings um, I'm freelancing full-time if you haven't watched a prior video like I was even looking at my invoicing and my invoicing has remained pretty much constant in this time and then when I do have gaps then I'll do like YouTube stuff and Skillshare stuff um, which also really helps because it then means that I don't have to build 40 hours in a week because I already get income coming in a bit more passively. Um, you might have seen my most recent video was about Skillshare referrals. So if you are interested in teaching on Skillshare, that is a pretty handy resource. I really liked filming that video. And yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day wherever you are. Please do let me know in the comments if you have any questions about Perth. There will definitely be a couple more vlog style videos, even though I am not a vlogger, I will not quit my educational video day job, but hopefully the varied content makes it a little bit more exciting. But yeah, I'm thinking of some fun topics to do, like what I didn't know about becoming a digital nomad or like that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so far so good. It's really been amazing and I can't wait to show you guys more of Perth. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!